Public Space Travel is a leftist, anti-capitalist podcast of disgruntled academics, video gamers, and friends. Our belief is that knowledge should be made more accessible and be used for anti-oppression and non-hierarchical revolutionary ends. You can support what we do at patreon.com forward slash public space travel and reach out to us at public space travel at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 208-502-1406. Now, on to the show. Weekly Warp, August uh, 23, 23rd. Uh, I don't know. I'm just looking at numbers here. This I, the, the weekly warps is like kind of like it's it's one of the few things that I have to like mark the passage of time outside of getting <laughs> dressed, uh, and sometimes I actually even forget to brush my teeth. Like so that doesn't. I'll go work. like halfway through the day and I'll be like, I honestly don't know if I did or not. I'll just do it. <laughs> I do too much. I think I brushed my teeth twice yesterday morning, but I nice. can't really remember. I, yeah. I did it at least once though. So. Yeah, that's. Uh, that's, that's the theme of this episode is like <laughs> how are you doing and, and, <laughs> and <laughs> um how like it's kind of like like similar to how generals have badges and stripes to show their experience we have dark circles <laughs> around our eyes to indicate our uh i don't all of this <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah we brushed our, our teeth state. twice our level of humaning yeah mm -hmm. just like humaning uh surviving this pandemic this year everything uh, <laughs> <laughs> i wrote a little poem i don't know if this will be included but i wrote this little poem inspired oh. by uh by lichen lichen's comments dark circles around my eyes dark circles surround my skies uh and then <laughs> oh yeah uh, <laughs> Lazarus, did you add here? Hello, darkness, yeah. my old friend. Okay. Aww. Yeah, I was hoping that Marx could like put that little <laughs> intro to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I like that. It's nice because it's not nice. Yeah. So we're going to be going into some election stuff today, some QAnon protesting stuff, and some climate things. Okay, let's just 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 jump into it, I guess. So the election this week, we had the DNC convention, um, the lackluster ceremony. To to like, I don't know, I don't know why they had to spend three days saying what. Yeah. Like, was it four? We days? all know it's going to be Biden. We all know that you're not going to give us free health care. Um, yeah. You, you snubbed AOC speech to a minute. She took a minute and a half, but like, and then inviting Republicans into the convention to further capitulate to the right. Uh, yeah. it, I, I didn't watch the whole thing, to be honest. I think I watched like the first full, the first night. And then I watched like maybe like half of the second night. Uh, and then I just like waited till the next day to just like read about it and find the speeches because it was all like, pre-recorded and it was basically just zoom so i don't know did you guys watch it or have any um, thoughts i i watched parts of the first three days but uh it was too high energy for me and mm -hmm. i i just couldn't handle the amount of intenseness that was coming from this giant dnc fest that obviously you know it's four days of partying and then the fifth day on Friday, they're having like a huge after party where you get to see John Kasich doing keg stands and they're doing keg uh, stands. Yeah. Yeah. So I, oh. you know, I couldn't, I had to, my old ass had to sit, sit out. So, <laughs> but what about you? Like, and did you, I have like no reason that I didn't watch it. I meant <laughs> to watch it. I was going to watch it. I should watch it. I have not watched it. That's good so, enough reason, though. I will Fair. hear your take, and I will take that into my eventual watching of parts of it. I at least want to watch, like, a couple of people. I want to hear AOC speech. <laughs> that yeah. won't take long. I, um, that must be why I have slightly more dark circles than you. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. I, I, did, I did see the Fox News um, just, like commentary saying, like, Biden's speech was actually pretty good. Fox? He didn't mess up. 
yeah, Fox News was had had some commentary from various of their talking huh. heads and was just like, oh, Biden's uh, Biden actually wasn't that bad. It's kind of interesting because I, I actually didn't watch the Biden speech yet. I, I don't know. I'm like, oh, I should have watched it before this, before we talked about it. But uh, I, I, there's a part of me that's like, I don't want to watch it because I know how, I know how post-production works. Mm. And I think, I don't think there was like editing in the video. I'm pretty sure there wasn't, but it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of weary about this, like of accepting this level of like our politicians having this like barrier between us like even mm-hmm. further like the fact that they don't have to like, give a live speech like we don't know if it was live or not we can't really i mean i guess we could confirm it but there was a mixture of pre-recorded and live speeches there was i don't know if this argues that it was live or not but there was a part where jill biden was talking in her classroom because she's she's a teacher mm-hmm. and she's a doctor and remind me because i have a comment a quote or a, a thought on that too but there's a part where Joe Biden walks in and he says, hi, I'm Joe Biden's husband or something like that, or Joe Biden's wife. Or He makes a comment that it's like that was her line or something like that. And mm. it kept going. And you can kind of see Joe Biden, like she didn't really make a face, but you could just like feel like the whole like, God damn it, that was not your line. Why did you, you are Joe Biden. You don't need to introduce yourself. I don't know. You, you'll have to. Oh, yeah. Okay. I need, we'll need to <sighs> watch it. We'll- there was a sentiment across the internet that kind of resonated with me, which was that like, I don't want to watch the DNC convention because I don't want uh, Democrats to talk me out of voting for Biden. Oh. <laughs> like you're resigned and like don't want another reason to get back into that pit of... Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> like you're just like, I, I've just, I've... And that's kind of my take. We'll talk about this later in another episode yeah. uh, about the election stuff, but... That's kind of like my thing is just, I, I mean, I guess it will. I live in a swing state, so I feel like there's like a strategic value to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's it's a huge resignation. And I'm like, I see as they're like, we're behind on donations. Like, okay, well, that's your problem. I'm not going to help you. I'm going to do the bare minimum to, for strategic value. But I personally have, I'm not going to give you any accolades. I'm yeah. going to continue to shit on you and... Uh, and, and your supporters, your ardent supporters, to me, are also valuable targets <laughs> for ridicule. Um, yeah, I think no, it's ahead. something for another episode, but, like, definitely, like, the whole, like, bare minimum, like, I feel like if they, for example, the Biden campaign, if the platform was more progressive, I think there'd be more of an incentive to do more than a bare minimum. Like, if you know what I mean, like, if yeah. you were to be legit about Medicare for all, if you're legit about, like, a Green New Deal, if you were legit about, like... Uh, inequity. Um, I think it would probably inspire more people to be more serious. But again, I mean, that's comments for another episode. And, yeah. 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 I want to watch Obama's speech too, and mm-hmm. Barack and Michelle's. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, I almost forgot it. So Michelle's speech. There was a moment where she said, "We have to vote." Like our lives depend on it, and the sentence before that, maybe maybe we should like find a way to like include this part or something. But actually, wait, hold on. Let me let me do a quick pause and find this. Okay. I I do want to say that when Bernie spoke, um, I do think it was interesting because he did, in some ways, like speak to his um, demographic, you know, the progressives and being like, I I think without saying it explicitly like this, he was basically like, look, I know you wanted me, but like, come on gotta like vote for, for yeah. biden i i do think that his background like where he was filming uh it was like a bunch of stacked lumber like firewood in it's probably not the case but i'd like to imagine that like bernie is like stocked up on firewood he's up in the vermont mountains and he's like i'm ready for revolution i'm all stocked up and ready to go mm-hmm. but i don't think that's the case <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh Maybe I imagined this part of the speech. Her speech was, I mean, it was pretty good. Um, from what that's I what I heard. I don't know why I haven't watched stuff. Oh, that was my, it was interesting that they explicitly portray Jill Biden as a doctor. She's Dr. Jill Biden. Um, however, 
I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't ever remember Michelle Obama or even Barack Obama that they, they both have JDs, which is like Juris Doctorate, which is, you know, you're, you're, it's a doctor degree in law that they never say like Dr. Barack Obama or Dr. Michelle Obama. So I was saying that that's really interesting. I don't know what that's telling of having a JD, like being a lawyer. I don't know. Is it also like they need to make, it was intentional for Jill to be portrayed as a doctor. I don't know. Hmm. So some interesting observations. That is interesting. I couldn't, I couldn't find the part. I, I, I could have sworn there was a section where she talked about voting and how important it was to vote for this election. And it almost seemed like there was a line in there where she was saying like that we had to go to the polls, like our lives depended on it. Like we, there is, I think there was it, actually, there was like a subtle thing of saying like, we may not be able to win this battle of voting by mail. And so you oh. have to be ready to go and wait as long as possible, no matter how long it takes to go through the physical was polls. It, I think it was Barack who said like, if you can go vote like early. Mm. And I think there was a hint of like go in person, which there's still a pandemic going on. Yeah. Yeah. There, in addition to the Trump pandemic. It's so I, weird because like growing up in or like being 18 at least in like it works fine. Like that's just been yeah. a thing. Yeah. You vote by mailing an envelope. So it's yeah. so hard to, there's like clearly no evidence that that wouldn't work other than the fact that it's being um blocked but yep. like how do people not see through that i don't know yeah i, I think know. uh recently trump also tweeted uh sentiments of his of his son saying if you can protest you can vote huh in person is it his is, son said that yeah like baron trump or uh, <laughs> trump jr eric? yeah well yeah trump jr eric. probably not eric um oh yeah they're the same. Have, they're all the same. They're like a homogenous blob that just like, <laughs> they just like but come off each other like a pimple. Like they just, <laughs> they get a pimple on skin and then it just bursts and then it's like another <laughs> Trump. <laughs> I, really, I really hope that um, Baron Trump turns out to be like Ronald Reagan's son, who was like a leftist atheist. And like, oh, nice. like Baron will just come out and be like the Antifa super soldier and be like, sorry, dad, I've got to save the world from you. I could see, I don't know anything about Baron other than that he is Melania and Trump's son. Yeah. That's it. That's the, li that's the youngest one, right? The, yeah, he's like I 12. Think so. The one who is still untainted. <laughs> Maybe. The, uh, the current uh, innocent, the only innocent in all of this. What? No. What? No. Back spawn of Satan. And it's interesting because <laughs> like Trump's sister recently spoke against him and his niece. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah. he clearly has some family members who are a little bit wise um yeah i'm i'm really interested though if like i don't know but i'm curious if she's only doing it because it's such a hot take that you could totally write a book about how bad trump is if you're a family member and probably make a fuck ton of money off that i mean even if she's doing it for self-interest <laughs> <laughs> go for it <laughs> yeah it's still a strategic win i guess i don't know it was weird because there was that uh, I don't know if books do anything like that book right. came out and I was like, everyone was like, oh, there's like this damning, you know, portrayal of Trump yeah. being racist and all this stuff. And then she had a couple of interviews and um, that was yeah, it. She's doing a Scrooge McDuck into like gold coins. Yeah. And then, I mean, yeah, that was, that was the end of it. I mean, it's weird because this whole year has been like such a, like, it's every, like, my whole attitude now is sort of like this this Buddhist mentality of like, uh, oh, bad things happen and you just kind of go, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. Speaking of bad things happening, uh, QAnon uh, has descended upon Portland to join uh, Blue Lives Matter and Trump supporters uh, in clashing against the Black Lives Matter and Antifa protesters um, engaging in a brawl that lasted a couple hours uh, yesterday and Saturday afternoon um, uh, with the cops um, just standing by watching uh, as one of the supporters uh, shot. 
oh, uh, yeah. BLM protesters with a paintball gun, and then later, I think that same person pulled out a uh, revolver handgun. Uh, there's a picture of him with his finger on the trigger and his hammer cocked. Uh, it's very surprising that I actually didn't get fired, but mm-hmm. of course, that I don't. That photo didn't prompt, or that 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 incident also in itself didn't prompt uh, intervention between the police. Eventually, the the QAnon people eventually backed off, uh, retreating. Uh, at which point, the um, police, the Portland police, then declared the whole thing a unlawful. I don't know if it was right then, but they declared it an unlawful riot, um, whatever their verbiage is, and then descended on the BLM protesters and started doing mm-hmm. what they do, which is the same thing Seeing that the QAnon other people yeah. do. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, they just traded places. They said, I'm tired. You tap mm-hmm. in. <laughs> Your turn to beat up on uh, Black Lives Matter well, protesters is, is essentially what went down yesterday. To all the protesters on the BLM Antifa side, you know, thank you for your service, genuinely, and thank you. Yeah. To the other side, fuck you. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Oh, and this, uh, I jumped ahead a little bit. Um, This also comes as Trump this week was asked by a reporter about QAnon, uh, about the conspiracy, what he knew about it. He said that he didn't know anything. He seemed completely unfazed with being faced with a question regarding a satanic conspiracy cult that is his supporters his only takeaway from that is that they like him a lot of course <laughs> yeah I, we can i think we have a cl- audio clip of it um yeah. basically trump they, you know he was asked um you know do you know anything about this you know the satanic cult that's uh, a ring of pedophiles that you're fighting against and i think basically um he said like i don't know but is there anything wrong with fighting against like uh that or yeah. you know bad, bad things thing? he likes like totally like very quickly turned it around and made him look good i bet all the q and were just like ah it's true yeah, yeah yes. like there's these supporters who say you're fighting a satanic cult inside of washington that has a pedophile ring uh and he goes you, you say that like it's a bad thing i mean if yeah. that's what i'm doing then i mean that i feel like that makes me sound like a hero <laughs> <So>. <laughs> And then he says, all I know about QAnon is that they deeply care about this country. They don't like what's happening in Portland. And uh, they're, they're, they care about this country. And they know that if this country was to fall, that, that their other countries would soon follow. Something like that along those lines. Uh, which feels like marching orders t- for QAnon to descend on Portland, which is what they did do. I don't know much about the movement other than I understand they like me very much which I appreciate, but I don't know much about the movement. Uh, I have heard that it is gaining in popularity. It was starting even four years ago when I came here. Almost four years, can you believe it? So I don't know really anything about it other than they do supposedly like me. The crux of the theory is this belief that you are secretly saving the world from this satanic cult of pedophiles and cannibals. Does that sound like something you are behind? Or well, I haven't, I haven't heard that. So, hooray. <laughs> I don't know what else And to what say. does country stand for? Like, I've just been thinking that. We always say, like, care about your country, love your country. Like, that's such a euphemism. Um, I mean, clearly when Trump uses it, it's colonization white supremacy yeah it's like, it's like care about the college. idea of your country but not think, the actual people that inhabit it no yeah, and the I, land is totally excluded from and, that yeah. has some backdrop yeah was it um was it newt gingrich was he the dude back in the day like when i mean that i mean like so many years ago where he was just like he basically was just like western civilization western culture is like threatened and like we're the last bastion of it basically and like if we fall, then it all falls. Like basically it's, it's that whole, like when it comes down to it, it's, you know, settler colonialism, white supremacy as, you know, this is higher culture. Everything else is lower, you know, first country, first world country versus everything else. Like it's all that bullshit. Um, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. I, I am always just like, uh, I mean, we, we talk about this all the time the, the GOP and the conservative people and Republican party, uh, the right, they are so disingenuous with 
each and every one of their arguments because like they claim to not be racist but they do things that are racist like if you go how come QAnon, this cult this insanity cult that is a terrorist organization i think officially classified by the fbi or at least like they were fbi was inclined to classify them as a terrorist organization um, the fact that they find this deep venn diagram intersection with blue lives matter and trump supporters and this whole thing and, and it's it's like how are you not racist i mean obviously again like it's they're they're not disingenuous because they're not arguing for mm -hmm. how they're good people they're just trying to argue <laughs> for how they want to do whatever they want to do without being called out for it hmm. i would i was just thinking like i think yes i think you are definitely like correct and i think that if you don't if you only see racism as like individual acts or individual beliefs it's really easy or -er to say like oh you know where racism has gone whatever mm -hmm. like there's only a few left but i think that if you look at racism as a systemic thing you know institutional mm -hmm. structures like kind of what we talked about in the critical race theory episode that we did like this whole idea of meritocracy, like all you gotta do is work hard and it doesn't take into account basically historical legacy of, you know, settler colonialism, oppression, who has access to what resources and uh, so forth, uh, and who's disproportionately affected even then and all the way continuing to today. Um, I would argue like also, like not only is it just conservatives who are being disingenuous, but it's also libs. I think libs are being very disingenuous by, yeah. you know, they'll paint the street Black Lives Matter, which is great, but like, where's the, economic mm -hmm. actual economic equity like happening and that's never i don't think that's going to happen under the current like lib and conservative especially like uh regimes so like when joe biden that's that was another thing i was thinking about sorry to go back to the election stuff but like something we can think about more in future like episodes is what meaningful and substantive like uh equitable you know like economic things are going to get passed or changed doubt it i doubt there's gonna be anything but that's just me maybe i'm being pessimistic but something for another episode i guess i think you're being very pessimistic and i think you need to sunny up your attitude <laughs> you need to bring this whole go podcast go. yeah what was yeah, that yeah. poem you wrote at the beginning Lucy? <laughs> uh not dark circles around my eyes uh, bright circles surround my skies dark circles surround my skies <laughs> I, when we're ready to transition, right that now. would have been a cool transition to be like, but not in California. Ooh. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was thinking just, about that I, too, as we were like <laughs> talking about <laughs> Smoke. Oh yeah. Sunny California. Uh, Where, did you, California. did you hear, totally hmm? not related, but did you hear in Death Valley, like temperature got up to like 134, like hottest ever? Oh like yeah, world I knew it was that? above 130. I didn't know it got oh. to 134. Here's yeah. a really oh, quick thing geez. is that everyone's not everyone, but I keep hearing people talk about like clearly 2020 hashtag 2020 sucks. Like yeah. 2020, these ter terrible temperatures, preseason hurricanes, fires, pandemic. And I think people need to wake the fuck up and be like, this is not 2020. This mm -hmm. is called yes. climate change, capitalism, yes. neoliberalism. It's not going to go away uh, when we wake uh, yeah. up on January 1st, 2021. It's going to potentially be worse next year. Yes. And that doesn't mean that we just go yes. all doomsday, but to be like, whoa, Let's see. We don't like this trajectory. We're not gonna like let like let, 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 let's change some stuff. Um. Anyway, I'm preaching to the choir, but it just I'm I don't I, the whole 2020 thing has really been bothering me. It's not mm -hmm. 2020's fault. So yeah. I love that. I, it's like I think yeah. it's like it's like we'll talk about this too. I think this kind of coincides with our idea of doing an episode on reality TV uh, and reality love televisions. That <laughs> our our culture is like been so. It, it we're we're so just like taught that everything is within like seasons in yeah. terms of like shows yep. and yep. and like football and sports like everything has like this like nice button ending towards everything and so everyone's mm -hmm. like oh 2020 and i've heard from family members actually saying uh, actually they were just vaguely just hinting at the fact that the vaccine will be available after the election as if it relies on the election as if science right. is going off of electoral cycles I was yeah. like, uh, and trump's blaming um like the people developing the vaccine for dragging their feet to make yeah, them FDA. look bad yeah it's yeah. not all about him 
anyway. Yeah, yeah. that's that's uh, that's the whole th- uh god uh, yeah so the whole thing is it's all fucked it's all fucked <laughs> it's, at the same yeah. time i think it's really compelling to think about like cycles as very real because i do think another part like kind of a contradictory part of this western colonial narrative is that time is linear um yes so like clearly progress draws on that productivity yeah so i do think it's really compelling to learn more like thinking of indigenous worldviews of just cycles yeah. of death and rebirth and time as something that's much more cyclical so i'm trying yeah. to think of like how can we that doesn't mean you rom- romanticize things but um just to think about like what does apocalypse mean i, I mentioned this in our like chat how it's almost like um alluring to see apocalypse as the ultimate disaster can't go back from it total destruction yeah. black and white because people thinking in like complexity and nuance is so much harder. Um, yeah. Yeah. So totally. anyway, that's just something I've been thinking about is how can we see this as like a very real thing that's going to continue, but also not just see it as like a linear march to death. Um, <laughs> I think I, I think we could have a really good like episode on that because I could talk about uh, Hegel, the philosopher Hegel, and, and basically like hmm. this idea of history is always progressing and like always bettering. And, I, and like you said, I don't no. think... I don't think it's going that way. No. And it's pretty naive to like, yeah. All right, we'll and talk about that. And to just reverse it I, too. Like it's I not just reversed. Ah, ah. Yeah. 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 There yeah. was a whole Age of Aquarius thing that seemed very promising. Mm. <laughs> That's That was about as exciting as the impeachment. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> sorry, we got off track. The climate. All right, all right. California wildfires. Me. There's like 560 back wildfires. Time. Yeah, back <laughs> to linear time. Yeah, back to linear time. But yeah, how many? 500? 560 wildfires uh, were burning as of Saturday, yesterday. Apparently, many of the fires were caused by mass, uh, by a mass of lightning strikes, um, sparks that lit a tinderbox of vegetation left dry and crunchy by months of persistent heat and low humidity. I know that, um, uh, like, and you, you were, you were looking a lot about the volunteer firefighter thing. Do you want to? tell us about that i can just say yeah from what i learned i mean for probably reasons that aren't too hard to understand the volunteer firefighting force just seems to be really low um i mean partly because there's such a high demand and partly because it's been like 120 degrees and we're in the middle of a pandemic and so just this use of prisoners as um a labor force that i think people like i've seen people getting paid like one two five dollars a day for fire firefighting um And so, and I don't understand the whole backstories and I'm sure it's different regionally too, but just pandemic, like COVID-19 has been sweeping through prisons. And Mm -hmm. so that means there's even a smaller group of people to exploit, but it's again, this idea of who's essential. And I was thinking about it, how we've talked about this before, where people labeled quote unquote, essential workers are treated as expendable workers. And this like, thank you of sacrifice. Thank you for your service, for being here at the grocery store does nothing to change the systems that make them essential and that devalue them at every turn until we need them. Um, And just when it becomes prisoners, I mean, maybe there's still that thank you for your service, but it's also kind of like, oh, well, if you die, you were a criminal. And so this, Mm -hmm. again, like taking human lives that seem to be a cheap labor force and the total like disregard for people's I don't even just want to say humanity because I think that's kind of anthropocentric, but like (laughs) living beings being treated like that. um, It's pretty terrible. Oh, geez. Isn't that just slavery, but with extra steps? Oh, geez. (laughs) I mean, I don't know if that's a bad comparison. Like, Uh, Where's the lie? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that's, I actually didn't, I, I, I didn't, I remember hearing, reading about some stuff about like the prison labor force. I didn't realize that that kind of was like, that it was as bad as it was. And I mean, alongside with the firefighters, the prison labor force, you also have uh, mostly immigrant workers still working Mm -hmm. in the fields while a fire rages, like right behind there's like video footage that I I just couldn't believe. Like like, there's just billowing smoke. It looks like more doors right behind the hills. (laughs) And then these workers are just just working just picking fruits and stuff like that for for our consumption and you know of course they're also 
under probably under some type of surveillance from ice or whatever um yeah constantly under threat uh yeah so by state kidnapping it's kind of amazing in a way uh the level at which people still hold on to this like view this like temporary temporary embarrassed millionaire mindset where a lot of regular folk are against any type of socialist changes because like they think that at some point they will become a jeff bezos and they don't want their billions to be taken away and like you're like you're not even gonna live that far we're (laughs) you're not even gonna live that long because we don't have a work for it we don't have a firefighter labor force where are the people that pick our fruits and stuff that give us food they're not going to be around if we don't do anything you idiot Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah and you you obviously can't run a business because you can't see short-term profits as a valuable thing (laughs) you can't you don't understand what an actual bottom line means uh or i don't know i actually don't know business that well either but i'm just like you don't have a business if people are dead so i I think i know know that (laughs) we we can all understand that at least uh (laughs) i think it I think like to go further, like even further with what you were saying, like, uh, well, I think what it comes down to is these people are saying like, no, don't, you know, I'm a millionaire to be like that whole like logic. It's really like, don't, no, don't increase taxes because I want to also exploit like human Mm -hmm. labor as well. And I want to keep more money. I want to exploit more. So like, not only is they just like, oh, I'm just millionaires to be, they're just assholes. And they want to continue the system of oppression. I mean, we're, we're I, kind I'm, of we're kind of at the end to wrap it up, but I, that like reminds me of the Uber and Lyft thing. I think oh, yeah. this week also, they're they've been required to to label their their workers as employees rather than independent contractors. I think since January at least they've been they've had all this time to do it, and then the deadline was this Thursday or Tuesday, I think it was, and they're like, oh, oh we're not prepared. We're just gonna have to close shop. Where you just have to shut everything yeah. down. Wow. Yeah. Um, so they're like leaving California then? Is that, is that what the lift is doing? They suspended Yeah, they're, like all, they're all threatened to leave operations. California. Like the whole idea, of course, is blatantly admitting that they can't survive unless they exploit their workers, <laughs> the labor right. force. Like, yeah. Uh, it's interesting because uh, in a science fiction novel, uh, Somebody like myself may or may not have taught classes and used examples from Lyft. And I, uh, in that really awesome science fiction novel, the, some students may have been like, oh, it's totally uh, good that Lyft doesn't classify their employees that way because otherwise, how could they provide cheap like rides? <laughs> and it's like in that science fiction novel, you know, I imagine a reader would be like, wow, that's not right at all. Like justifying exploitation under like a logic, like. I mean, there's already, I think there's already like rider co-ops and stuff. Like there, there's a whole nother thing that uh, this, this is like a tangent, but there's the corporations and capitalism is, is killing us at an exponential rate. They want, <laughs> they want to see us all die and they'd rather force us into the streets and then convince uh, supporters of of their ideology to fight against anti anti fascists, um, the full title of of their cause, or and, and um, beat against Black Lives Matter supporters. Um, they rather send you into the streets to do that because if you're doing that, then you're not spending time thinking about how you're actually expendable. I, I don't know. I'm mad. <laughs> I'm really mad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I have so many like subtopics, like even yeah. this idea, like with the crop workers, maybe sometime we can talk about just this whole idea of cruelty free food and how it ties into white yeah. veganism and yeah, yeah, just the dis- and then also like the both ends where people are mourning the redwoods right now as they absolutely should be, but why is that often held apart from the human exploitation? Like I I think it's again these yeah. false dichotomies where you're either a tree hugger and a vegan, or you're for human mm. rights, specifically yeah. black rights and indigenous rights. And so again, like those I think are treated as one or the other sometimes, not by everyone, but like how can we seriously, seriously see those as together and tied with capitalism? Um, mm-hmm. And liberals don't do that. So Nope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so stay tuned, listeners, because we have so many awesome topics to talk about. I know. We have a lot of a lot of things to talk about all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um 
All right, so that'll that's gonna do it for <laughs> us this week. Um, hope you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, find us on Twitter at PST Pod. Uh, you can lurk further on from there to find us individually. Not all of us are on Twitter. Some of us are <laughs> other places. Some of us are nowhere. Um, maybe yep. we're famous of your imagination. Who knows? Um, <laughs> reach out to us. We love to hear from you. Let us know what you think about the things that we think about. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. Dark circles around my eyes. Dark circles surround my skies. Hello darkness, my old friend. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Lazarus Wolf. Just wanted to do a shout out to our patrons. Absolutely a genuine, massive thank you to our supporters who help us continue this podcast. So thank you, David, Noelia, and the Midnight Sloth for supporting us at the $5 solid MD level. I like you, and if you can't handle it, you can just, you know, fuck off. Please consider donating to your local bail or mutual aid fund or another charity for social justice. If also able, you can also support us at patreon.com slash public space travel. Public space travel. Why does mine, I feel like mine's always a little bit ahead. <laughs> That's why is we that, do it. That's why that we do the clock. I think so. I mean, okay. you, you didn't do anything different from the other times that you've done it. Okay. Right? Uh-uh. I, so, I always wait till I see And I haven't heard any complaints. Okay. Well. I was the teacher. producer. Yeah, if our producer doesn't complain, then it's okay. I feel like he probably <laughs> bears a lot that he just doesn't tell us. Oh yeah, I get messages like, all the time for, oh, for my stuff. Yeah, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, today he's like, turn down the gain. <clears throat> Wait, what do you sound say? disgusting? Fix your mouth. Stuff like that. <laughs> oh no. Anyway, it's actually a little bit hard to hear you. Yeah, I, I, I turned it way up. <laughs> this is for the record. I got it on record. Okay, how's is that a little better? I think so. Yeah. Or should I turn it up a little more? Oh, yeah, I think you just got to be closer. Yeah, no, I got to be right here. <laughs> yeah. We need to yeah. hear all those, those deep lows and those highs, highs. Oh, yeah. Full range. The full range. <laughs> the full range, baby. If Mark gets mad at me, I'm going to blame all of you. All okay. of us? For telling yeah, you to you be said, louder. It's too low. It's too high. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Mark sounds. Yeah. It's yeah. too high. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, this motherfucker. I'm going to mute him the entire episode. This is, right. anyway. I've been recorded, by the way. So this is all going to go to him. And he's oh, going to yeah. go like, you son of a bitch. Oh, yeah. 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 He's going to hear three tracks of it, of it. This is what happens when I'm not around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so. Yeah.